Welcome to a bonus step for making a top-down adventure game in Pico 8. In this bonus step, we'll make it so you can have unlimited types of tiles. This step assumes you have already completed the full tutorial. If you weren't satisfied with the eight types of tiles that Sprite Flags give you, and you want many more types of tiles, this tutorial will help you out. If you just started Pico 8, you'll need to load your game. Once it's loaded, hit escape and we'll get started. It only takes a few lines of code to make it possible to have unlimited types of tiles, but it does involve a bit of extra work to make the switch. The main thing we're going to do is stop using sprite flags and keep track of tiles with a different method. Switch to code tab 1 where we list all our sprite flags in the map setup function. See how we list which sprite flag number means what? For example, how walls are sprite flag 0? Now we're going to replace these sprite flag numbers with a list of exactly which sprite tiles are that type of thing. So for walls, we need to go find out which of our sprite tiles are walls. For for that, we need to go to the sprite editor. Looking at our sprite tiles, the ones that are walls are 18, 32, 33, 34, 36, 37, 50, and 52. I'm writing them down so I remember. Now we go back to our code and add that list for walls. We use a table to store the list using curly brackets, so we replace the 0 with 18, 32, 33, 34, 36, 37, 50, 52. Now you can see wall now holds a list of all the sprite tiles that are walls. Now let's do that for keys. Go to the sprite editor. Keys are sprite tiles 20 and 36. Now back to our code. Replace the 1 with 20, 36. Now we just keep doing the same thing with all the different sprites until each tile type holds a list of all the sprites that match that type. See what I mean about it being a bit of extra work? Now that we've changed how we keep track of tile types, we need to change our isTile function that tells us if a given xy coordinate is a certain type of tile or not. The first line finds out which sprite tile is at xy and stores it in tile. Now, instead of using fget to check if tile has the tile type flag or not, we're just going to look through the tile type's list of sprite tiles and see if tile is there. We'll use a loop here starting with the first item in the list and going to the last item in the list. The pound symbol in front of a list name gives back how many items are in the list. So if the tile type sprite list is 5 items long, pound tile type will give back 5, meaning it will go from item 1 to item 5, which is the whole list. Each time it loops, we'll check that item against tile, and if it matches, we'll return true. Returning ends a function, so anything in the function after that is ignored. However, if it gets through the whole list and it doesn't match anything at all, the last line will run and will return false. This makes sure we will always return either true if it finds a match, or false if it doesn't. And that's it. That's all we have to change. Let's just double check to make sure everything still works before we go into how to add new types of tiles. Save the game with Control S and run it with Control R. Okay, animations are definitely working. Let's check walls. Yep, those work. Let's check keys. Yep, keys work. And here it is in our inventory. We'll check the chest too. Yep, that works. Let's see if we can die on the spikes. Yep, we can die on the spikes. Let's re get the key and check doors. Yep, doors work. Now let's make sure we can win. Yep, wind tiles work too. Okay, great. Everything is working as it should. Now let's see if we can add a new type of tile to our game. Let's add gold. Go to your sprite editor. Fortunately, we already have a chest sprite tile, so we'll use that as a way to collect gold. We need to know which sprite tile has the chest, and it's sprite number 36. Great. Now let's go back to code tab 1 and take sprite 36 out of the keys list and make a new list called gold and add sprite 36 to that list. Players have no way to keep track of gold, so let's go to code tab 2 and add a way to track gold. We'll add p.gold equals 0 so that we start with 0 gold. Now, just as we have a get key function, we need a get gold function. Go back to code tab 1 and copy and paste the get key function and rename it. And instead of adding one key, we'll have it add 5 gold. Next, we need to add something to our interact function so the player can interact with gold tiles. Go to code tab 2 and let's add a new else if to the interact function that checks if the tile is gold, and if so, it runs our new get gold function. Lastly, we need to update the inventory screen to show how much gold the player has. Switch to code tab 3. First, expand the inventory rectangle to be 6 pixels taller. Then, add a line after keys to show how much gold the player has. Make the Y coordinate 6 pixels lower than where it drew the info about keys. Okay, that should be it. Let's test it out. Save the game with Control S and run it with Control R. Let's check the inventory. Yep, no gold. Now let's open the chest. Check the inventory, and yes, it worked. We now have gold in our game. You can now add as many tile types as you want this way. You can make treasure or different kinds of keys that only open specific doors, different items to collect for quests, and the list goes on. Good luck. Thank you for watching.